like recursion. I never use it if I can avoid it. Computers are hundreds times faster than before, but our apps are hundred times slower. I think we are documenting the wrong thing. Welcome to the new video where I react to Reddit posts. I made the first part of this video a while ago and it kind of worked pretty well, at least it was really fun to make. So I decided to do this again. And I don't have a real strategy of picking the Reddit post that will get a lot of attention or something. I just go through my Reddit feed and I choose the ones that I like. So let's get into it. Ooh, we're gonna start with something a little bit controversial from the very beginning. What is the point of recursion? After learning about it, I asked my professor about it, but he told me that you don't really use it because of bug potential or some errors it can cause. Anyone in industry that uses recursion, is there other programming concepts that are education exclusive? Wow, this question targets me specifically because I don't like recursion. I never use it if I can avoid it. And let's be real, in most cases I can. But I wouldn't say that it's education exclusive. I mean, yes, sure, recursion is basically a stack of function calls and you can do it using a stack, but the use of recursion to improve readability is a thing. As I mentioned, I don't personally use it. I want to have as much control as I can. And recursions are dangerous because if you don't figure out how to properly end recursion, you're going to have the stack overflow exception or whatever exception is in your language because the recursion will call itself so many times that the stack of function calls will be bigger than it possibly can be. So you want to introduce this stack that you control manually and in most cases it works. I do have one area where I think recursion is a big thing and this is interpreters or compilers. Because when you're working with grammars it's so easy to get lost in all of it that I, I think it's beneficial to use recursion there. The debugging skill that nobody teaches in computer science classes. Well, because they're about science, right? Anyway, just learn this way too late. Binary search debugging. I never had heard the term. I mean there is debugging, there is binary search. You can combine anything with binary search. When code breaks in 500 lines, don't read top to bottom. Comment out half, see if it still breaks, and half again, found back 10 times faster. Interesting approach, don't comment out your code. Real game changer though, learning to read the other people's code. Start with the open source and I realized I couldn't navigate large code bases at all. What works? Follow execution path, not file structure. I would also recommend starting from controllers if you're working with the web service, because when you see the endpoints, you can predict which behavior is exposed to the clients and you can go from there. Read tests first to show intended behavior. It depends on the quality of tests in the code base. Sometimes, no. Especially if you see a fresh code base where the tests were probably written by AI, just be careful. And scrap for function calls, not just definitions. If you have a good setup in your IDE, that's pretty easy. Makes you realize programming is 80% reading, 20% writing. That's generous. I wish I would spend 20% of my time writing code. That'd be nice. I would say 60% is talking, 30% reading, and 10% coding. Depends on your face in life and in project and in the company. I guess. Actual regex knowledge. Yes, yes, 100 times yes. And don't just learn it because that's boring. Try to play games around it. Try to find the regex in your code base or in open source code bases and try to guess what that is. Because I feel like just learning the rules once means you're going to forget them. But if you see them every now and then and you try to guess them, that makes it way nicer. Using debugger breakpoints instead of print statements. I don't have anything to say about it, it's complete truth. I still use print statements in front end because I suck at front end. I find this post quite interesting, but don't comment your code, guys. First of all, you're gonna forget to uncomment it when you commit your changes. Second, if your code is using the same parts in different places, it will mean that you will have to comment more than you thought you would, and it just leads to the confusion. And also, if you can comment half of your code, maybe your method is too big. Is my programming style weird? Mine is. When I program, I have this strange obsession where everything must be as low level, fast and small as possible. Most of my non-graphic apps are less than a megabyte and I insist those are details nobody's interested in. I just like to clarify, I'm not going to run making sure every line of code can run in less than 20 milliseconds. Wait, that's 
long, but I still want my application to be fast, light, and efficient. I'm tired of apps that take forever to load the most basic things. Some of you are saying memory is cheap and such small executables are no longer needed. True. But we still have to remember that not anyone has a flagship top-of-the-line setup. My PC is new and only has 4 gigabytes of RAM. Loading times are worse for me. They're much worse for people with old it's a laptop, so I'm like, this is a very difficult stance because I fully support it. I think that modern applications are bloated. The usage of libraries is over the top. It's completely unnecessary. Nobody cares about memory. Nobody cares about speed. And it just leads to this weird scenario where our computers are 100 times faster than before, but our apps are 100 times slower. I also understand the business need to move as quickly as possible. And all of this bloated software is moving the business forward as fast as it can. We as engineers need to find some common ground between these two extremes. This is the job of every developer to make sure that the job is done with the minimum amount of resources possible. In this current business situation, everything in programming is a trade-off, and this is specifically a trade-off. Keep in mind that generic solutions are usually much bigger because they need to cater to multiple use cases. When you write code for your own specific use case, your code will be much smaller, which is great for efficiency and speed, but you would have to maintain it. Instead of using a library that's tested by a lot of people for a lot of use cases, you would have to test and maintain and fix your own code and sometimes it's okay and acceptable but sometimes if you think about it in terms of how much a developer costs to a company how much maintenance costs to a company because it means not building new features for your paying customers sometimes it's just not worth it and sometimes we choose for bigger bloated software instead of writing small efficient code it's just life am i happy about it no but you know advice from people in their 30s to people in their early 20s if you are in your 30s please drop some wisdom for us at the start of our careers in our early 20s can be related to computer science or more general lifestyle well i can finally answer this question because i'm finally 30 before i check the comments because i'm super interested in what other people said if i could give one advice to myself at the start of my career i would say that i should leave work at work i was very eager to become as good as i can possibly be so after work, my head was just spinning and thinking about all the stuff that happened. And I, I think that it led to not good consequences over the long period of time. And I could have become a better engineer without that. So yeah, don't think about work outside of work. You can still do programming stuff and work on yourself without having this work context in your head. Let's check the comments. My best piece of advice is to not blindly trust someone because they're older or more experienced than you. There's plenty of people that have decades of experiences at top tier companies that give terrible advice. Take all advice with a heavy grain of salt. Whenever possible, try to do your own research and arrive at your own conclusions rather than trust the advice of somebody else, especially anonymous internet stranger. This is so true. I think it took me years to realize that another person's opinion is just another person's opinion you know not the source of truth not something that i have to listen to it's just a piece of information that adds to another sea of information that i have and now i have to process all of that and make my own conclusion just because somebody says that my code is bad doesn't mean it's bad because somebody says that my code is good doesn't mean it's good you know what i mean if somebody tells you that you don't have to use recursion but you see clearly that in your project it's completely justified you have the information, make your own choice. You can build a career anywhere. Companies don't care about you. Health over wealth. This is true. The company doesn't care about you because company is not a person. A person can care. A pet maybe can care, but if you have met my cat, that's probably not a thing. But a company is an organization. It exists in some lawful financial field and does not exist on an interpersonal relationship field. You do interact with a lot of people in your company, but if they leave, the company stays. So no, the company cannot care about you. People can. Listen before you speak. Listen more than you speak. And do not let emotions get the better of you. I fully agree on the listening part, still working on it myself. 
but the emotions are true and I do not mean a heated conversation at a water cooler, that's fine. In our profession, emotions are getting the better of you in the pull requests because this is the place where people are coming to criticize your work and it's always a bit sensitive. So you have to be really mindful about what you write or how you react to the PR comments. I think it's like a topic for the whole other video because I feel like this is the area where a lot of people are struggling. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a comment to let me know if you're interested in the topic. Documentation is the most important thing. Most managers can understand your code, but they will understand your documentation. That will help you a lot when you're negotiating your salary, both intentionally and externally. This is a very good point. Documentation is king. But I think we're documenting the wrong thing. I read this book, Pragmatic Programmer, and it highlighted this point, and I really like the way they framed it. You have to document your whys. Because the implementation of your code, the architecture, I can get from the infrastructure, from your code, from the history. This is not a problem. The problem is why did you make this decision? Because sometimes when you look at the code base and everything is so stupid, but then you talk to people who wrote it, you understand the reasons they did it and the environment at the time they had to make a decision and the information they had at that moment. And you realize that this was the smartest decision they could have made with the information they had. And then when you factor in everything that changed since then, you have a new why and new decisions. And then it all just makes sense. How do you keep up with the ever-changing tech stack? Hello everyone, I'm a full stack developer with about four years of experience, primarily focused on front-end development. In my day-to-day -day work, I use React to develop business applications. Recently, I've been feeling a bit overwhelmed by the constant evolution in the tech stack. Only recently. New frameworks and tools are emerging all the time and I often feel like I can't keep up. I'm not sure how to choose which new technologies to learn and how to fit them in my already busy schedule maintaining existing projects. For those of you who have been in the field for a while, how do you balance learning new technologies with maintaining your current skills? How do you decide which new frameworks and tools are worth your time? Are there any specific resources or methods that you find particularly effective for learning and applying new technologies efficiently? The best thing you can do to stay on top is to talk to other people. There are so many technologies that chances are the people around you will be invested in some other ones, so you will have the most rounded view about which things exist and why do they exist, and then you can choose to dip dive into some of them. The other best thing is to read some curated media like Hacker News or some YouTubers like Fireship who are just delivering the news to you on a silver platter. Or the combination of the two, go to a conference and talk to other people there because there you will have both curated media and you will have a lot of people to talk to. I looked at the comments of this post and most of them are saying that you do not really need to keep up with new frameworks because you need to focus on the old ones, focus on honing your skills and focus on prioritization of what matters. And this is true, but I feel like you need to be aware of what's going on on the market so you're not getting redundant and don't get pressured by it. I had a period of like, year or two years in my life where I just did not keep up with anything on the market because I was tired of that. And you know what? I'm still okay. I'm still relevant. So it's not a necessary thing, but it's just nice to do sometimes. What language should I start with? I'm not a complete beginner. I've studied C and I'm in the uni for computer science, but to be totally honest, I've been passing all of my coding courses by just studying the right material and predicting exam questions. So my actual understanding of coding concepts is incredibly weak. And now that I'm on summer vacation and have time, I can actually self-learn. I think it's completely normal because in the beginning, it just takes time to have this big picture in your head. So yeah, you won't have that big picture for a while. Just accept it and give it time. I'm not sure what language to start with. I know what language I learn typically depends on what I want to do. But the thing is, I'm not sure what I want to do. There's like a billion jobs related to computer science field and I'm very overwhelmed. I don't want to overwhelm myself by concentrating on applying knowledge I don't have to huge projects just yet. I want to learn the fundamentals of a language that I can easily transfer to another language. I've heard most people that start with Python then to struggle later with learning other languages. 
this, which is what I'm hoping to avoid. I was thinking C++, do you hate yourself? But apparently JavaScript is the most used language and high level languages are typically more sought after. So no, I'm not sure. Is it better to just pick what I want to do first than learn a language based on that? Like JavaScript, if I have interest in full stack dev. When you're choosing a new language to learn and you just want to learn a language for the sake of the language, so you don't actually know what you want to build, I think it's kind of safe to go with languages that can support a number of practical applications at this moment just because if you don't make it fun you're not gonna continue with it so you have to choose something fun and i think that javascript or python are great choices because you can do a lot of things with them i think we should believe in people more and i don't think it's a huge problem to learn another language after javascript or python i personally went through a lot of languages in uni I started with C-sharp, then it was C, C++, Fortran, Java, Bash, uh, Python. I think especially when you're already in university, all of the concepts you will get. So you can focus on something enjoyable. I personally think that languages like Java, Kotlin, or C-sharp are kind of good because they give you proper structure. They teach you a little bit about memory management, but not overwhelming a lot like C languages do. So I think it's a good choice language wise but i do not think it's a good choice for a beginner who is just learning something on a summer vacation just choose something fun just something that will help automate your routine tasks or choose something that will help you build a web application that you can share or choose something that will help you code your uh, little robot that you build i don't know what's your thing but choose something fun i hope you learn something from it and don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel, all of the blah blah blahs, and I'll see you in the next one.